Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. About 10 months ago, I made a garage door insulation video, which ended up getting a lot more views than I expected it to. Uh, first of all, I apologize to anyone who subscribed to my channel thinking that it was a home improvement channel. It is not. I do automotive work, but uh, you are welcome to stay anyways. So I was reading through all of the comments on that video and I noticed that the same set of questions and comments kept popping up and, uh, again and again. So I did want to address those for those of you guys who are still considering whether or not you want to do what I did. Uh, and also at this point, winter is almost over. So I did want to provide a 10 month update of what it's been like to live with these and how it's been holding up. So at least after 10 months, the installation is holding up j just fine. It looks like the day that I installed it. Uh, one of the choices that I made in that video was to use masking tape instead of the aluminum tape that I actually had on hand. Uh, and my reasoning for that was if ever I want to remove all of this, masking tape is obviously a lot easier to you know remove than aluminum tape, which will hold up much better over time and it is permanent, but it is permanent. You can't remove that without leaving a whole bunch of tape residue and essentially ruining the garage door because it'll also peel off the paint. Um, so I am happy with the choice that I made, but if that if removing it is not a concern of yours, absolutely go with the aluminum tape. I'm not recommending masking tape to everyone. Uh, but at least for my masking tape job, it is holding up just fine. There's no areas that are coming apart or anything. There are some areas that I could, you know, tap down a little bit more, but it's not really at risk of uh, falling apart. All right, so we can now go through some FAQs. The most common question being how much of a difference did all of this actually make? And I made a whole separate video on this topic, which I will link somewhere up here. Feel free to check that out if you want. Uh, but long story short, the, the difference is about six to 10 degrees in the extremes. What, what that means is I would expect your garage to be about six to 10 degrees cooler in the hottest of the summer months and about six to 10 degrees warmer in the coldest of the winter months. And that may not sound like a lot, but think about how much you fight over the control of the thermostat with your family members inside the home for like one to two degrees of difference. Uh, 10 degrees is huge guys like I wouldn't mind working uh, indefinitely in a garage that's 80 degrees but tell me to work in a garage that's 90 degrees that's going to be pretty brutal and I think that's totally worth it for a, a project that you can do in about three to four hours with less than a hundred dollars of material. Another pretty common question that I saw was why did I install the Reflectix layer on the outside and against the manufacturer's recommendation of installing right up against the garage door and potentially just installing the styrofoam layer on top of the Reflectix. And I, I, I did do a very good job of explaining this uh, in the video, uh, but the reason why I did that is for the winter. I was just hypothesizing that if you put the Reflectix layer on the outside, it would do a better job of reflecting back the heat towards the inside of the garage in the winter where I wanna keep the heat in here. Obviously, I'm just guessing. I did not test both methodologies to see which one was more effective, but it, I just chose to go with this um, because I wanted to keep the garage warm in the winter. And also I think it is more aesthetically pleasing, at least in my opinion, to see the reflectus layer rather than the cut up styrofoam layers that I patched up using masking tape. Now, some people seem to be really concerned about the amount of weight that I'm adding to the garage doors and the potential strain that it's putting on the garage door motor. Uh, now that it has to lift the extra weight. And uh, to that point, it is legitimate, but I'll repeat what I said at the end of the video, which is I don't recommend people do everything that I did. Uh, I went totally overkill. In fact, I would just recommend you do the Reflectix. And if that's the case, it's such minimal weight that you're adding to the garage doors. I, would, I doubt that you need to readjust your garage door springs if you didn't have to do that already. But I learned that the way that you can check um, whether or not your springs need to be readjusted is if, uh, if you lift up the garage doors manually, if you detach it from the rail and you lift it up and it doesn't stay put in any given position on its own, then the garage door springs need to be adjusted. Now, I did do that test with my door and while I can really easily open the garage door up and down, um, it doesn't stay put right at the bottom. I have to lift it up off the floor about 
uh, two to three feet until it does that. So it does seem like I have to readjust the door spring. So I, I appreciate everyone who left that comment. I learned something new. The retentioning garage door springs is really easy um, as long as you're you know being safe. And I also learned that you have to retention your garage door springs every once in a while, like maybe every once in three to five years. So go out and check your own garage door springs, whether or not you're doing this insulation job and get it retentioned if you want to make your, um, or if you want to make sure that your garage door motors are lasting as long as they can. This is one of the stupider questions, but it keeps popping up. So I'll just go ahead and answer it. And the question is, why didn't I just get insulated garage doors? Well, I, this is, I, <laughs> I think this question is stupid because you're comparing something that requires or most likely requires a professional and co probably costs thousands of dollars. And you're comparing that against a sub $100 three hour DIY job. And while I am, I, I don't need convincing that a, you know, properly already, um, you know, insulated garage door will do a better job than what I did. You're comparing apples and oranges. It's not really the same thing. So there was a section in the video where I was using a infrared thermometer to try to show you guys how much of a difference uh, each of the layers of the insulation was actually making. And some people rightly pointed out that I was using or I was misusing the infrared thermometer. Uh, you can't just put a tiny piece of masking tape on a reflective surface and try to point a little laser at it and get an accurate reading. So that is fair. Um, I, so I read up on it a little bit and uh, yeah, that's uh, that won't get you an accurate reading. But essentially what I was trying to do is do a little better than, oh, this feels hot, this feels cooler. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys visually, you know, what the difference was, but it turns out that wasn't the best way to go about that. So I apologize, but just take my word for it. The insulation absolutely makes a difference. It is a lot cooler in here. I probably the most amusing set of comments came uh, from a bunch of people who were telling me to go, uh, tell my HOA to go f themselves and go paint my, uh, garage doors in whatever color that I wanted. Uh, I honestly didn't know uh, so many people had such negative feelings about the HOA. Uh, I personally never had a problem with my HOA. I live in a townhome community, very small townhome community. I actually know the people who run the HOA. They're totally cool people. Uh, they've never given me any problems or you know come around to tell me what to do or what not to do. Uh, it is true that I can't paint my garage doors in whatever color that I like. Uh, but you know, I don't really care that much. And if that's a price that I have to pay, um, to ensure that my neighborhood looks nice, everyone pick up their garbage and no one's running a shady business, or I don't have to worry about gardening or my, st the state that my roof is in, you know, that's, you know, a fair price to pay. I don't really mind it. Uh, if you want to go tell your HOA to go f themselves, feel free to do that. All right, I hope that answers most of the questions that you guys had in mind. Uh, if I didn't answer anything, uh, feel free to just continue leaving comments in the video and I'll try to get to as many as possible. Um, you know, go out you know, into your garage, make it into your own space and have fun in there. Uh, that's all that matters. Have a good one, guys.